Welcome back to Most Amazing. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. Here are the top 10 classified NASA space missions they don't want you to know about. Who's they? I'll never tell. Let's dive in. Number 10, Lost Habitable World. Remember in 2020 when we casually discovered phosphine on Venus? And we talked about it for like four business days and then went back to normal? Yeah, in the middle of 2020 of all times, data from 40 years ago resurfaced. Documents from an old NASA mission where they may have overlooked this phosphine. Yeah, whoops, didn't see that quick sign of life there. Yeah, our bad, oops. This compound of phosphorus and hydrogen, this is eye-opening, but what's next at this point? Well, NASA is currently preparing to launch two new missions to Venus. This is part of NASA's discovery program they're launching in 2030, so. Something to look forward to, dare I say. The Da Vinci Plus and the Verita S. The first is a deep atmosphere Venus investigation of noble gases, chemistry and imaging, hence Da Vinci. Then the second will map Venus's surface, studying its geologic history and hopefully we'll get an understanding to what happened to such a lost habitable world, as NASA puts it. I don't wanna find bones of like humans and stuff, that's scary. Number nine, carbon on Mars. It's one thing to have Elon tweeting about going to Mars, but when NASA talks about it, I get an eerie feeling, you know? NASA's old school. They're like, oh, we may have found carbon 40 years ago. We don't know, papers everywhere. It's so NASA to have papers all over the place. So old school. Well, in 2022, just back in January, believe it or not, NASA's Curiosity rover measured carbon signatures on Mars. This is exciting. Paul Mahaffey, principal investigator of the sample analysis at Mars, he says, quote, we're finding things on Mars that are tantalizingly interesting tantalizingly, good word, but we would really need more evidence to say we've identified life, end quote. Okay, so we're close. It seems like we're close. You're saying we're close, right? Side note, imagine going on a Willy Wonka trip to Mars with Elon. Like, who's actually gonna go on this thing? I would pay not to go. How does that sound? No way. I can't do wooden roller coasters, let alone a rocket ship. Number eight, Europa Cryobot. We talk about Jupiter's moon Europa quite often in this reason. We found traces of water on the icy shell of the moon, which is fascinating in general because, well, water in space, we love that. All signs point to aliens, if that's the case. But the part that really has NASA's attention is the tectonic activity beneath the icy shell, meaning that somewhere in the middle, there could be warm water flowing. Yeah, imagine finding a solar space spa. That'd be nice and relaxing. One of the only ways to get a look under that shell of ice and find out is by using Valkyrie. Yeah, Valkyrie's great. She's a chirobot that NASA created specifically for this mission. This machine is capable of melting through layers and layers of ice. A prototype was actually tested in Alaska and the results were promising. This chirobot is capable of crawling through eight kilometers of ice a year. Awesome, that's great. Can't wait to meet Atlanteans in 2040. Let's do it, plenty to look forward to. I'll practice my alien handshake now. Or do we do like a hug thing? You never know. Even in space, you never know. Number seven, Abel and Baker. We often remember Laika, the space dog, and her, you know, 103 minute cosmic journey aboard Sputnik 2. God rest your soul. But does anybody remember Abel and Baker? Why don't we talk about them? What's going on? This was the American version of Laika. This was less than two years later. This was May 28th, 1959. The United States launched a female rhesus monkey named Abel and a female squirrel monkey named Baker. Just launched them into space. This mission lasted 15 minutes and they both safely returned back home, which is great news. The monkeys were not injured from the trip at all, or so they say, although they were whipping through space at 10,000 miles an hour. It's pretty impressive. Reminder, this was 1959. This was when space travel became the real deal. This is now a possibility. Abel sadly passed away after the flight. Meanwhile, Baker got famous. Yeah, she was getting letters, 150 letters a day, supposedly. I'm talking fan mail to a monkey. That's great, right? These ladies are icons. Never mind Laika. Hit that thumbs up for Baker, you know? She made this list possible. Number six, asteroid redirection. Okay, this has Michael Bay written all over it. I'm pretty excited for this project, I'm not gonna lie. I can't even catch a baseball with my bare hands. How the hell is NASA gonna catch an asteroid hurling through space? Let's break this science down. NASA landing on an asteroid is one thing, but their asteroid redirection mission is just next level, honestly. The plan is for NASA to catch, to catch an asteroid using hypothetically a large space inflatable. And no, I'm not joking, just a big floaty in space. It's gonna go 
and just catch it. Yeah, and then they're gonna move said asteroid to the moon where it would then orbit for further studies. Yeah, we want to adopt a rock and then gently have astronauts land on it and then study the moon. Is this 2099? Is this possible? How are we here? This is crazy. We can't figure out women's rights, but we can catch an asteroid in space. Number five, NASA's gateway. Sounds interesting already, doesn't it? No, it's not teleportation. Don't get too excited. NASA's gateway is the next big space station that's going to be flying around our heads every day. And they're partnering up with other international agencies, so it's quite a big deal. The U.S. Habitat, that's the final piece to this floating science center. The U.S. Habitat is set to be delivered sometime in 2025, allowing four astronauts to begin studying on board the station. Science that could get us even closer to Mars, which is Scary. I think it's fascinating, but I think it's pretty scary. Why? Where are we going? Why are we leaving? What's up? Say so everyone's leaving? Like, what's going on? Like, this is NASA going to Mars, and then this is Elon going to Mars. Number four, psych. If you play No Man's Sky, this next one will have you itching, my friends. Here we go. My gamer friends, this is for you. NASA has a billion dollar mission that was supposed to launch this year, but it faced delays in completing software verification testing for the craft's navigation. So ironically, Psyche had us all psyched out. It didn't happen. It will now launch in 2023 or 2024, one of the two, depending on the next best launch period. You know, space, they're like, uh, now, wait. Now, gotta wait. It's so, it's, it's really hard to time stuff out in space. But once they arrive, hypothetically, this asteroid is believed to be a massive nickel core of a protoplanet. Just a big chunk of nickel floating through space. One of the biggest asteroids in our belt. So whenever NASA does arrive after a four year commute, of course, it sounds like it's gonna be worth the wait. I'll get up there, I'll start shoveling some nickel. Some hot space nickel, there we go. Number three, Titan Dragonfly. This mission is set to launch in 2026. This one could change things, for real. Saturn has a plethora of moons, just like Jupiter, and like the latter, these moons are capable of holding the secrets to life. Possibly. Once the rotor craft arrives on Titan, much later in 2034, it will then fly around and study the moon's environment. Yeah, how amazing is that? This is so Dune. This mission is set to last almost three years, so whatever it does find could potentially crack the code to how life on Earth here evolved in the first place. This beast of a rotor craft is expected to travel to dozens of locations and search for prebiotic chemical processes. Aliens. It's a nice way of saying they're looking for aliens. More of, oh, what's up? More of these guys. Number two, the fallen astronaut. This isn't a space mission per se, but it is something that happened in space and not a lot of people know about it. And it's certainly not something I knew about before this, so let's talk. The fallen astronaut is an aluminum sculpture that was meant to depict an astronaut in a spacesuit. The piece was commissioned and placed on the actual moon by the crew of Apollo 15. This was back on August 1st, 1971. It is next to a plaque that lists the name, the 14 names of the men who died, and the entire thing is meant to be a tribute and to commemorate the astronauts and cosmonauts who died in the advancement of space exploration. It's beautiful, it's a beautiful tribute. This wasn't cleared prior to being done, but you know, I think the important thing is that it was done. I don't think anyone's getting in trouble for having this secret, lovely, personal mission on the moon, you know? No one's getting slapped on the wrist for this one. Those explorers were brave and brilliant, and they of course deserve to be commemorated in the best way, on the moon itself. Couldn't imagine a more peaceful place. And finally, number one, Artemis One. Artemis One is a planned, uncrewed test flight that's part of NASA's Artemis program. The Artemis program is a United States-led international human space flight program. Basically, the goal is to put humans back on the moon, because yeah, that was kind of fun, right, when we were doing that? More specifically on the South Pole area of the moon. The aim is to have humans there by 2025, and if this is successful, it would be the first crewed lunar landing since Apollo 17 back in 1972. So yeah, it's about time we head back, I think. Artemis 1 was expected to launch in February 2022, but now it's launching in August 2022 instead. This mission will be the first flight of the Orion MPCV, and it will be the certification for the Orion spacecraft, as well as the Space Launch System launch vehicle to see if they're ready for crewed flights. Basically, it's important. It's a big, it's a big test that they can't screw up. Let's fingers crossed. If all goes well, crewed flights will begin with the second flight test, Artemis 2, of course, with humans. That's pretty exciting. I want to end on a hopeful note, you know? I went from like Leica and launching monkeys out into space. I'm like, hey, you know what? We're going back to the moon. Isn't that fun? I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and if you want a part two, let it be known in the comments and I shall return. See you next time on Most Amazing. Bye. It is next to a plaque that lists, yeah, I was gonna say plague. I'm like, no, that's not on the moon. It's definitely a plaque.
<laughs> Number seven. I was like, ah, ah, it's awkward. Sorry. Ah, they just hug. I'm like, ah, you guys do it too? No one figures this out. Thank you.